Before I start this video, I just wanted to invite everyone to please tune in on May 16. It's gonna be the first episode that's dropping of that, the competition that I created from Tattoo Warriors. And I'm really excited for this new project. I was happy to be able to get amazing artists to join this competition because my main purpose is to really showcase good work. I don't want to based off a competition on drama. I don't want drama in here. I don't want gossip. Let's make this about just tattoos. Even though it's a competition, I want these artists to support each other as well in here and outside of here. I'm also really excited the fact that I got some amazing judges uh, being part of the competition as well. Uh, Angelo from Sacramento, California. Chacon from California as well. We have Daniel Rocha from Las Vegas. AD coming from Florida. And it's just so amazing to see this uh, there's big names in the industry making time to come down to Arizona and being part of the show as well. So if you guys can do me a, a huge favor, tune in May 16 and share with your friends, share it with your family because the main purpose of this competition is to really make a community that supports each other. Tattoo Warrior season one begins in May. I've chosen six amazing artists to compete against each other so they can showcase their best work. Roger Perilla here. Uh, I'm a tattooer out of Atlanta, Georgia. What's up, you guys? This is Joseph Cabello from Tulare, California, representing Body Art Gallery. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Thomas Salcido. Hi, my name is Jacob Lopez. Christian Navarro. I'm the artist Moet. No drama, no categories, just amazing tattoos. Winner will be taking home $5,000. Who do you think is gonna take it? I've been competing my whole life, so having the opportunity to compete in this contest as an adult, more than excited to participate. In the last two years, I hit the road, traveled across the country to many conventions, and took home many trophies. Having been tattooing 16 years, I need to find ways to push myself, to go further and, and push past you know, any barriers that I've created for myself. Okay, which is why I'm excited to join this competition, to compete against other dope artists and to really test my skills on a competitive level. I can't wait to see what this journey is gonna be like, where it's gonna take me. And I'm super excited to be part of this competition and showcase my artwork. The category is just amazing artists going head to head with amazing tattoos. See you soon, Tattoo Warriors. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel. This week, my client and I came up with a crazy idea to do his full sleeve in the next couple days. So with that being said, let's get this day started. Let's go. This project is gonna be amazing with a whole bunch of meaning. It has a whole bunch of details, so we're gonna be putting a lot of hours. I'm already predicting that this project is gonna take me 40 to 60 hours, maybe even more, who knows. We had an amazing consultation. We were able to connect and we were able to relate to each other because of our backgrounds. So that made it really easy to communicate with each other and being able to give ideas and options and opinions uh, to make this project look amazing. Alright, you ready? Ready? Ex exquisite. Ex exciting. exciting. Uh, finishing up the wrist area was uh, time consuming for sure because of the flowers, they, got it, they had to be very delicate and I had to work around it with a lot of corners so taking my time on it and yeah it was definitely time consuming but now I'm ready now to start doing the face of Mara with a whole bunch of texture. With my 14 round liner my goal is to do a whole bunch of texture and do as much coverage as I can with just my solid black because I need the face to be very contrasted uh, with uh, a lot of dark tones and a lot and a lot of highlights so i'm bouncing off the highlights of my black to make sure that it stands out from afar especially him since he is a bodybuilder and he puts on a 10 when he when he goes on stage i need the uh, the piece to really stand out and by doing that is by allowing the skin to breathe so i'm taking advantage that uh, i'm able to use a lot of uh, the texture to make it stand out.
Yes, sir. Your skin is glowing, my guy. It's glowing. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> All the little textures, the chin. Yeah, you can already see it. Starting with the Buddha, um, I'm excited to start the face of the Buddha because I already did all the contrast on Mara. So the biggest thing now is to make sure that I don't add too much darkness to the face of the Buddha to make sure that I separate both, um, both faces. It's going to be really important so I'm going to take it very slow with my 13 curve mag. Yes. And uh, because I added so much, so much texture on Mara, I want to take the route of uh, a soft statue with the Buddha so that way your eye is going to be able to separate both faces. And with my solid black and a little bit of gray, I'm going to be creating all the shapes because I don't want solid black, but I also don't want it too gray to maintain that darkness. So it's going to be really important for me to step back a few times, navigate, and to not rush it because you're going to be able to see any, any uh, stroke that doesn't belong on an area. So doing the face, I just got to be very, very patient, take my time and make sure that every stroke is uh, smooth. I love how your, your skin is just making the Buddha just, just popping, just bright. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, that is, that, is Look at that. that is insane. Look at those features on the Buddha. He looks yeah, it's zen. Crazy. He's zen, yeah. Zen. You can see the exactly the difference, like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Yeah, the that's... separation between both faces is really important. That is crazy. Perfect. I feel good, but no, I love it. Like I'm just chilling. <laughs> I just, I just told Kevin, like it just feels like a workout to me. I just did a workout. That's what it feels like. Do you think it's a lot of uh, mental? It is. I can see why people break down. It's a lot of mental. It's not something that's like really bad that you can't tolerate. You know, so. That my approach is gonna be starting on the bottom, connecting the bottom piece to the top piece. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing is executing the armor of the samurai and applying my contrast first because I want the mask to be bright and center of attention. What happened? Were you like, I turned around and you just <laughs> finished it like. I finished it too quick, huh? You finished oh. it like super quick. The rope? The it's because you know what? I It was the coffee. It's the coffee? It's the coffee. You gotta pick it up? I, so. I have the coffee. Look at where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I drank all that already. My guy. Damn. <laughs> That's a full on cup too. That's a full on cup. So with the chin area, since it is the area that's really going to give the shape to the mask, I'm going to mix my solid black with my medium gray. I need this to be sharp at the end of the chin to give it that aggressive look. Uh, and very, um, it's really going to give it personality. So that's why I ended up mixing my, my black and my medium. So it's not too gray, but it's not solid black. It's right in the middle. As I get, uh, and as I get closer to the end of the chin, I will begin mixing, uh, I will begin to add more gray so it can fade out. So it can start from dark to light. We are very close to the solid black under the chin that I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose the chin by adding too much contrast. So now I'm mixing a little bit more of my gray and you're gonna see it uh, fade a lot smoother. And I'm using my 13 curve mag with a voltage of a 5.0 and it's already getting that. I'm gonna mix a little bit more gray now so I can start fading it and separate it from the background. Look 
fucking. Ooh. <laughs> Crazy. Have you ever seen like 70 year old people admiring something when they go like this? <laughs> that's, that's you right now. That's me right now. <laughs> this thing is glowing. This thing is insane. Not gonna lie, you have a big ass arm, my oh, guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking me so long to get to where I need to be. You saw the tricep area? Yeah, I was like, ah, damn. <laughs> So what are you doing? Twice it. <laughs> Four hours later, twice it. Twice this again. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, on this area of the helmet, I want to give him a different kind of look because I've seen a lot of images where they do filigree, they do flowers all over the place, but I feel like it, it makes everything look a little confusing. So I'm going to substitute the textures that I've seen on other pictures with almost like a rough metallic rusted look uh, so I'm doing the scribble technique with my 14 round liner and uh, with a voltage of a 5.0 with my medium gray and I'm just doing the scribble technique across the whole thing and building my contrast and my dimension first and I'm doing it very slowly uh, just so I can make sure that it is not looking goofy or it's not looking too random, there has to be um, a shape, there has to be a rhythm to it. And I love this look, I've done it in other helmets before and other tattoos and I love the look, I like the way it looks. And it really brings out the features of uh, the whole piece because I need to separate uh, little textures and little shapes and the way everything feels. That way you're able to recognize and give every little area its own space. I sent the application six months or like five, six months ago to Kevin, and I was I was gonna wait on Kevin. Like I wasn't gonna go to anyone else. So even if I waited more, I mean I waited a decade. I could wait more, you know. Yeah. So, but I was gonna wait on Kevin. When so. did you? Once I got accepted to that, I knew that everything else was gonna fall in place because I wasn't gonna stop with this sleeve. You know, I knew I had a plan for other uh, other places on my body. So once I got accepted, I was like, yeah, I'm. My foot's in the door. So, you know what I think is really interesting about the whole thing, though, is that um, I think even though you knew that your values were not going to change mm -hmm. with uh, the concept, I think it was mostly your childhood mm -hmm. that that really made you want to get it. Yeah, you know, because as your childhood just it's inspiring, and you went through so much. Yeah. So I feel like this, it was bound to happen. Yeah, you know what it, I mean? this made me who I am today. How, how old are you? 29. 29. So I'm 29 We're too. the same age. So you know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. I think that that makes it even even way more crazier because as you were talking to me about that you were living in poverty back home yeah. in the Philippines. I was back home in Mexico. Even so, living the same way. Living the same That's life. That's crazy. As, and we, what, what age were you when you came here? I was about seven or eight around there. And I came at 10. At 10, yeah. Insane. Insane. Uh, and we're... And it brought us here. And it brought us here. That's crazy. And I, I, you know, when we were talking in the in the consultation, we had the same culture shock yes. when we came to the United States. Yes. Which is insane. So we held on to our culture and our roots. Yes. And our beliefs. We never strayed away from it. No. And that's the most important part. That's what made us who we are. We connected with this project. It is. We definitely connected. Origins connect you. Mm -hmm. Origins connect you. Damn, I would love uh, for the next project uh, mm. to start off maybe the day with a quick little interview so you can tell us like, your your story for sure a quick little story this project here yeah yeah of for the sure. project and the way we ended up here i yeah. think that will be like a like a super dope element to add to that video because i don't want people to see this project as just what it is mm. i want them to really get to know you mm. because yeah. i need people to really understand why you're getting this yes. and the importance and the meaning behind this I was born in uh, Iloilo City, Philippines. I grew up in the slums area of the Philippines. So growing up, it was it was difficult. A lot of you know trials, tribulations that we had to go through. You had to mature very quick in order to survive in that environment. You had to mature. You had to learn survival skills, emotional intelligence. The distinct memory when I came here from the Philippines to the U.S. is going to be culture shock, 100% culture shock. We didn't have opportunities back there, you know. Um, there was no such thing as, there were so many luxuries here that was foreign to me. Even just like a distinct memory is when I went to school, 
a carton of milk was foreign to me. We didn't have cartons of milk back then. The way you can do anything you want here, whereas over there, even if you wanted to do things, it was limited and there was no opportunities. Here was more just freedom and luxury. Just the little things. I'm not talking about like wealth or anything like that. The little things that we take, you know, maybe take for granted every day. Over there is an extreme luxury. We're getting closer to finishing your project. We're almost there. We probably already put close to 60 hours now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this project was probably one of those projects that got me thinking. Yeah. Got yeah. me really thinking. I got creative. I got, I, it made me want to learn about the culture. But I also know that it was very connected to you. Mm -hmm. You told me your whole life story, yeah. but I want you to start at the point where you're living conditions mm -hmm prior to starting your business? Terrible. <laughs> Living in this was terrible. Uh, so I remember when I came here, I felt like it was, I was lost. Mm -hmm. You know, language barrier, you didn't know how to talk to people, culture shock, right? Um, people acted different than what you're used to. Of course, this is not my homeland, so I was like, we had to start fresh. My mentality at that time was just like, can we just go home? Mm -hmm. Back to the comfort zone. How long did it take you for you to learn English? Fairly quickly, probably around a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah, they tried to put me into uh, like a speech program. Mm -hmm. uh, I refused. Um, I wanted to learn it my, by myself. The thing that got me was like in school, they teach you proper English. Yes. But when you're talking to your peers, it's mm -hmm. slang. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how to differentiate the two. And plus on top of that, you know you know this, like you had to translate in your mind yes. before you spoke. And the thing is that I don't know if it's the same way with your language, but everything in Spanish is backwards. So you yeah. have to translate it and switch this to this side to make it make sense. It's jumbled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you if you say it in like a direct translation, it's not gonna sound uh, right in English. The idea of the tattoos was I wanted to bring my inner self outwards. You know, I wanted to portray what my principles and values were. Um, because tattoos to me, I mean, they're f of course, they're forever on your body. You know, we're, we're humans, right? Everything is ever changing. You know, our mentality can change in the next week or so but the thing that's ever constant to me that will never change is my values so there's a saying it's, it's better to be a warrior in a garden than to be a gardener in war and that's where the idea came from now at this point you're about to start the business yeah. so what were the the struggles before starting the business mm -hmm. when you were older and how did you start the business the struggle definitely was it, it was just the basic necessities of a human being, you know? Mm -hmm. I had no luxury of AC, mm -hmm. right? Um, we're in Arizona, so there's no AC in my home. Mm -hmm. uh, we barely could afford food, mm -hmm. you know? It's just, there was no future for me. There's no education. I was an immigrant. There was no future at all, oh right? Um, I came here, you know, fighting an uphill battle, but that wasn't gonna stop me. I think that's one of my, my biggest advantages because I had no choice. You had I, no choice. I, I had no choice. Mm -hmm. I had to survive. I had to figure out some way where my last, my last resort was going back home, but that was not an option. So I needed to learn how to survive here and thrive. Mm -hmm. You know, not just survive, but thrive and succeed. What sparked that idea? A lot of people actually think I went to college, you know, I learned business, all this. No, I needed to find out what my next meal was. Mm -hmm. So we invested into something just little, right? My family and I invested into something little. It was a garbage disposal, mm -hmm. right? I used garbage disposal. We tried to flip that and just make something off of it. 15 bucks, nothing much. And the, mm. the thing was, that investment that we, we put up into that, that item, mm -hmm. it was supposed to be for grocery money, but we kept going and going and going. So mm -hmm. a year later, we put up our very first store, very small store. Once you realized that this business was gonna be the one to get you out of poverty and the struggles in life, and you know that this was your future, when did that happen? Actually, so that's a great, 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 great question. So um, I met my very first big customer. When, we, when, when the first store was, the mini store was put up. Mm -hmm. So this, this, I didn't know at the time, all I, need, all I knew was my, my version of customer service, right? Because mm -hmm. um, I was always a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. So my version of customer service is just treat, treat it like, treat the customer or, or the human being as a human being. Treat them with respect, you know? Exactly. But it turned out that this guy was actually an, uh, a real estate investor. Wow. So I, I, I secured my first big, big sale. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, that's when it clicked. In my mind, I was like, this is it. This is the ticket to out of poverty. It's his birthday. Damn, yeah. so you guys started the business on his birthday. On his birthday. Oh, that's yeah. so sick, yeah. officially. Officially, Today, yeah. we make it a business. That's the oh. time when we open the doors. Wow. Yeah, it's so crazy. 29, 30. 30, yeah. okay. 
Look at that. And I'm, I'm in my comfort zone because I customized the, this piece to really showcase uh, my techniques. When it comes down to the medium gray, uh, what I mean by that is uh, the medium gray is going to be like a 60% gray, maybe 70. I want to make sure that it's still pretty dark and being able to to keep that darkness going because if I start mixing my gray to make it look super light, it's going to give it a different look and it's going to give it a different style. I'm going to sharpen up this crease of the nose. That's a crease, right? That's what you call it. this little loop of the nose. <laughs> Sounds so weird. I'm going to push it up now right here. I'm going to push this gray towards the top now. I think the most important part about all of this and your story is that we're talking about business side of transactions and money and survival. Mm -hmm. But I think you were already wealthy by having the support of your family mm -hmm. and having your brother be next to you. And I think you were already rich yes. prior to the business. Yeah. It's just that the business now made you rich, wealthy in a different way. Exactly. You know, yes. and your values never change, yes. of course. And I think since the sleeve really speaks on your story, mm -hmm. now this sleeve is not telling the story of the now, mm -hmm. but it's telling the story of the past, the past. You know, so now thinking about where you are now, mm -hmm. successful in every single way, mm -hmm family-wise and your business, thinking about it back to the past, how does that make you feel? Do you, do you still have like, are you grateful for having that past? Or do you feel like uh, in some way you kind of wish you would have had a different upbringing? No, um, I'm, I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed to be here. I'm not supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, the, <clears throat> where I'm from, where I grew up, you are destined to fail. Just being here in this present moment, I'm beyond blessed. Everything else that's, that I have now is just a cherry on top, but the person I became along the way is the true success. I can definitely relate to that. I, I felt like I am the person who I am now because how I grew up, yes. you know, and I think my parents, I never understood this, mm -hmm. but my parents wanted me to grow up in Mexico and learn my roots. Now I understand. Mm. With your upbringing and everything, mm. is there a memory that you remember that until today you still think about when you were about to start the business and you said, man, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Yes, oh my goodness, yes. So um, there was a point where we didn't have any food, like literally no food. The janitor would, would sneak leftover spoiled food, mm. like with mold. Mm. So she would sneak that in into our house and we would scrape off like the icing and the moldy part and we would eat it because we had nothing to eat, you know? And that was the moment where like, in my mind as a kid, I was like, we're not gonna live this life. This, we're not, we didn't come here to live this kind of life. Mm -hmm. How know? old were you at this point? Around eight years old, eight, nine years old around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, so my dad never sheltered us from the reality of our situation, right? So that's what made my, me and my brothers mature and and yeah, ultimately that's what made us successful just because we had, we saw the reality of things. And I think at that point it was more like, it can't get lower than this. It can't get lower, no. It's only up from here. Yeah, I have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. That is, ah, that hit me. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of hit me right there, you know, but I would have never imagined everything you went through and how successful you are now. You just carry yourself in such a humbling way sure. that it's, it's very refreshing. The way we present ourselves it's not to impress mm -hmm. nor to play victim. When it comes down to your sleeve, that's why I put so much emphasis and so much significance into, into the sleeve because there's no way I could have told your story with one sleeve. Yes. There's just no way. Yes. And then without studying the culture, there is no way I, I would be able to connect it to your story mm -hmm. because there's so much to it, yes. you know? And when, I, when we first met in the consultation, in my mind, I'm like, man, like, there is so much There's to this. so much depth. And I remember telling you, I was like, I need to study this. Give me three weeks, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I'm glad you were flexible for that. Yeah. <laughs> so now having your sleeve now almost completed, mm -hmm. which today is the last session, yeah. what, what is the one thing that the whole sleeve reminds you of with your personal life? Um, preparation. Mm -hmm. So I've always been taught, so, you know, we, we named the, the piece, the warrior in the garden, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just a reminder of preparation. So even like 
even though we're, we're in a war, right? It doesn't mean we partake in the war, but you have to be prepared for any scenario that comes along with. Even though like I'm in this situation now, I know that I'm fully prepared. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. I'm glad you said that yeah. because I feel like our, even though we're where we are right now, we're good, we're stable, mm -hmm. we know that we, we are good. Yes. We, our life already prepared us to not be yes. okay. Yes. And we're ready to come back up no matter what. Yes. So I feel like that sleeve definitely represents that in every single way with yes. you. So it's an amazing story. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to add to uh, about your story that you want everybody to know? All the aspiring, you know, immigrants or entrepreneurs or anyone that's having just like dealt a bad hand in life, literally just, it, it just takes one opportunity. Don't give up. And it's, and it's about what you make it. What you make, yes. You can't you wait for opportunities. You yes. gotta look for it. You can't expect it to, to lie on your lap. You have to go after it. And when somebody makes it look easy, it's yeah. not because it was given. It, it wasn't given. It's because you work, her so, you work so hard for it. Yes. And yes. now you make it look easy. Yes. We're good. Hey, my God, that was hey, amazing. Hey, that, that was amazing, that was man. Nice. Oh, I, I almost cried a little bit, man. <laughs> I almost cried. Like, go you, got, you tapped into your childhood. I, yeah, no, because <laughs> it's, it's very, like, it, you, you forget these things, right? Like, you kind of, you, you're amongst, like, so many people, right? So many, like, people with you that love you now. Uh, my wife will always be there to catch me no matter what. But the thing is that when you didn't have that support, you feel lonely. You feel lonely. You feel like if I fall, I fall, you fall yeah. and I'm going to bring down the only person that supports me, which was my dad. Exactly. Yes. And I said, if I fail, my dad fails. Yes. We are their investments. Mm -hmm. We are their representation, mm -hmm. right? We, we're we going to make sure that their legacy moves on. I have been super busy lately trying to get the show ready to go. But after a couple of weeks, I'm finally able to post this video. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out, the outcome and everything. And because it's been a couple of weeks, I told my client, you know what? I don't want to post the reveal fresh. So because it had been a couple of weeks, I knew it was fully healed. And I asked him, please come back. I want to take some uh, healed, uh, healed photos and videos. So I'm about to show you the healed project. So that makes it even more exciting. So with that being said, if you're a tattoo artist, I hope you learned something from this video. And if you're a tattoo enthusiast, I hope you were entertained. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.